Salam sejahtera. Anda sedang menonton Gaya Live from Home bersama panel jemputan Edgar L. Dan moderator Ejen ID Jangan segan untuk tanyakan soalan anda di ruangan komen Kongsi video ini ke wall anda untuk peluang memenangi Hadiah menarik Tajaan Skytrax Adventure Starbucks Malaysia Mas Debug Dan Wardah Cosmetics Gaya Live From Home bermula sekarang Tapi sebelum itu, ikuti juga kami di Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok dan Youtube Untuk lebih banyak kandungan kembara Selamat menonton Hello everyone, apa khabar semua? Selamat Hari Malaysia. Mesti ramai yang cuti panjang daripada hari Kamis itu kan? So, tapi esok dah kerja. So, um, terima kasih kepada anda semua kerana terus menonton Gaya Live from Home. Dan malam ini kita berjumpa lagi dalam episod ke-36. How are you friends? Okay, kita ada another two friends here with us right now. So, this week we're back with another two guests. Except this week we have the pleasure of having international guests from the Philippines. Hello, Agar. Hi, Ed. And also from Japan. Hi. Uh, Ria Miyoshi. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for being with us tonight. Um, konnichiwa. Konbama. Salamat. <laughs> Hello. Is it, is it the word? Mabuhay, mabuhay. Mabuhay. <laughs> Magandang gabi. Mabuhay. That means good evening. Mabuhay. Good evening. <laughs> All right. So to Gaya Live audience, malam ini saya kena speaking mat salih sikit lah sebab guest kita dua orang ni tak boleh cakap bahasa Melayu. Okay, so harap you all faham inggris saya walaupun berterabur sikit malam ni eh. Okay, okay without further ado, uh, as with our previous week, of course we have sponsors too for this episode. We have Starbucks, Wada Cosmetics and Skytrax Adventure Langkawi, one of the best forest adventure in Malaysia. Their branch in Sungai Chongka has the first high rope coast Cost Park in Malaysia and they are back in operation from 16 September 2021. Skytrack tax takes us back into nature with activities full of adrenaline. For more information, visit skytracks-adventure.org or visit their Instagram page at Skytracks Adventure. Also, we have new sponsor tonight, Mas Debak Bakso Oden Viral. Oh, the name is very long. So, <laughs> so you want uh, to try some Korean Oden but with a little touch of Indonesian taste, then you must try this, this one. So my camera is like a little bit freezing tonight because the internet connection is very bad tonight, okay? So um, for more information, you can visit their Instagram, masdebak.hq on Instagram, okay? And um, amazing prizes away. So jangan lupa untuk kongsikan live ini ke wall anda atau ajukan soalan terbaik anda untuk tetamu kita pada malam ini dalam ruangan komen di bawah untuk beberapa peluang memenangi Best question, tiga pemenang dengan soalan terbaik akan menerima satu baucer masuk ke Skytrack Selangkawi, satu paket mas debak bakso Oden Viral, empat baucer minum beli satu percuma satu dari Starbucks Malaysia and one piece of majalah Gaya Travel. And also, tiga orang betul yang telah berkongsi live ini ke wall anda akan juga menerima um, This one, Starbucks Marks, Reserve Black Eagle Limited Edition and empat voucher minuman. Beli satu percuma satu tajaan daripada Starbucks, Malaysia. Uh, satu paket Mas Debak Baso Oden Viral, satu goodie bag daripada Warda Cosmetic dan satu keping majalah Gaya Travel. <sighs> okay, there are so many prizes to win. Okay. <laughs> And before that, I before I introduce our guest for tonight, in conjunction with Malaysia Day 2021, don't forget that we still have the Be Gaya Ambassador Contest going on until 30th September 2021. There are about RM10,000 worth of prizes up for grabs. We have the Risk Cotton Langkawi, Vivanta Langkawi, Hotel Sri Malaysia, Fiaravan, uh asia big points and also pocket money cash up to rm 1500 ringgit so visit guy travel instagram right now terms and conditions apply also sempena dengan hari malaysia dan 16 tahun kami memeriahkan industri pelancongan dan kembara dapatkan semua produk-produk kami dengan 16% discount di shopee sehingga 30 september 2021 lawati shopee.com.my/ 
Gaya travel sekarang. Huh. So is that 10 minutes? Yeah, I think it's almost 10 minutes. No, it's only 5 minutes introduction. <laughs> As just for our sponsor for tonight. <laughs> okay. Okay, I will guess must have waited too long already. Sorry, guys, for waiting. Okay, let me introduce our first guest tonight, Mr. Edgar, Al Mr. Edgar Allen Zetaya from the Philippines. He is a travel writer, photographer, and a blogger residing in Cebu City right now. He is a travel storyteller since 2008. He has traveled to all 81 provinces. I... Today, I learned that there are 81 provinces in the Philippines. That, that's, that's a lot, a lot, okay? <laughs> and in the Philippines, from, from Batanes to Tawi-Tawi and all 11 nations in Southeast Asia, including Malaysia. And he has even been featured on Malaysia's TV, on TV3, NTV7, My Tourism TV. And apparently, he has visited all 14 states in Malaysia. That is, is that correct, Edgar? No, actually, I've I've al almost been to oh, no. all, but uh, I haven't Not been to Sarawak Boston. and Perlis. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that means only twelve, but two more to go, right? Okay, so Edgar must have a lot to share with us about his experiences in Malaysia tonight. So we'll come back to him later, and you can find more information about Edgar on easytraveler.net e a z y t r a v e l e r.net or you can find him on instagram easy traveler okay welcome Edgar, and how are you doing tonight hi ed uh long time no see it's it's great uh, yeah. uh, to uh, finally see you after how many months or um, many months i think almost months, two years year, two years <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's, yeah it was long so long <laughs> oh. so for, for, because uh, almost every year, like you, you we come to Malaysia like two or three times, right? For, to 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 go, to come for our our media trip in Malaysia, right? Yeah, Gaia Travel would usually organize all these regular uh, fam tours all over uh, yeah. Malaysia, mostly on the peninsular Malaysia. And I've been fortunate enough yeah, to be able yeah. to join these trips and explore different uh, parts of peninsular Malaysia. Yep, yep, yep. And and you haven't been able to come here in 2020 and 2020. Yeah, right? no, no, no travel at all. My last trip to yeah. Malaysia was in mid-2019. I was covering two stories about Kuala Lumpur for the in-flight magazine of Cebu Pacific Air. So I was there uh, ah. for a few days to, to do some groundwork, to do some research for two articles. Yeah, yeah, I believe that was the the last time we met. I think, yeah, 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 yeah I think so. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got. We come back to she's such a beautiful lady. She was apparently born in Penang, Malaysia. So this tonight, the first time I know about this. Okay, she was born in Penang, Malaysia, raised in Japan, and graduated from the University of Hawaii. She is the creative force behind behind Outdoor Japan, an adventure travel magazine and media company based in Japan. She has worked in the travel and communication industry for nine years or more. I think it's more, right? Right, okay. She works closely. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. She works closely with the tourism organization in Japan and overseas, developing strategies to create exciting content to promote their destinations. She also regularly regularly works with outdoor and lifestyle brands with, while supporting travel and tourism in Japan. So Ri is also tonight, the first time I know about this, she <laughs> is half Malaysian and half <laughs> Japanese and she has her hometown in Penang. We come back on this later, okay? So her favorite activities include snowboarding, hiking, diving, wake surfing, climbing, and there's a lot, a list of adventure activity here, okay? That's why, yeah, if you want to know a lot about traveling in Japan, she is the, the person you have to ask for, okay? And right now, she is traveling around Japan with a Kiwi husband, oh, nice. Casey, who is also a drone pilot and snowboard instructor. Okay, follow her on Instagram at Tremix R. 
trade mixer yes. or outdoor japan at outdoor japan so welcome really thank you for being with us tonight and hey. how are you doing i'm good it's it's really nice to see you uh, we were just talking about this earlier um we actually have a yeah. crazy story so i met ed what 2015 or so on one of the fam trips and then yeah later i was walking across shibuya intersection and for those who have traveled to tokyo you'll know that shibuya intersection where the hachiko statue is is one of the craziest crazy. places in the world Correct. i was just walking there yep. after work, and then ed walks right in front of me <laughs> like, what? What is this? <laughs> so yeah in the middle of nowhere and i don't know anyone there so it right in the middle of the junction you know so i heard someone was calling me like a girl was calling me Ed, Ed. so i was like oh my god i have a fan here <laughs> <laughs> so oh and god. apparently real miyoshi was there i was like i was so glad because a yeah. lot there was like hundreds of people crossing yeah. at the same time yeah, so yeah. Of, all, I, of all yeah. places not to miss of, someone of yeah. places yeah yeah and so she sweet. has a very good eye because she can see me or probably because I was so special that time. I was the only one who has no hair. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it was so easy to see. All right. Um, welcome, Ri, again. Okay. Thank you for being with us tonight. Okay. Um, so um, we're going to go to the first part of our, our conversation tonight. And also to those who watch uh, on Gaia Live tonight, don't forget to keep on give us great question for our guests tonight so i will try to pick some of the questions and also stand up an, uh, an uh, opportunity to win uh our 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 prizes tonight okay Ooh. all right okay we go to the first part we want to talk about your life okay so can you guys share a little bit of background on what you're doing in life right now okay why not we go ladies first okay so uh obviously working in the travel and tourism industry as a, yeah. a travel writer photographer um the pandemic hit us pretty badly because japan is completely close to international visitors the nice thing is that you know this has yeah. given as a chance to explore around Japan and go to places that aren't as crowded. Um, obviously, yeah. I mentor tourism, so you know it, you're not going to go to a crowded station or anything like that. Um, but it's given us the opportunity yeah, yeah. to explore within Japan. Um, obviously, the first few months was um, pretty strict lockdown, so like like anybody um, and everybody <laughs> and their mom, uh, I got really into to cooking <laughs> so i'll share that right here <laughs> oh yes that's that's literally everywhere in the world because yeah, in everywhere. malaysia there are like a lot yeah. of viral food somehow emerges yeah. emerged during during the lockdowns <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also um, that's a lot yeah. yeah this was just some of the the first two months we got really into cooking <laughs> and then uh, I actually got married on a personal note in July. Oh, wow. Yeah, so oh, we got married. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so that happened. And uh, after that, uh, the lockdown got a little bit uh, less strict. So people started traveling uh, around the country. And so that slowly opened up. Right now, that's still going on. Um, working from home most of the time, still cooking. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, how 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 uh how are you affected with the pandemic? Other than your uh, uh, your work, the industry you're working in is affected with the pandemic because you know, especially especially in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand, we know that the tourism has affected um, has been affected by the pan this pandemic very very badly yeah it has um we're hopeful that the country will open up soon so in the meantime what we're doing at outdoor japan is we're working with local tourism boards um yep. helping them build their content so yeah that they can prepare you know we can film things we can go to places where there aren't so many people because 
of the pandemic and we can film and get all those um, content and information out. And then hopefully yeah. when the, the inbound visitors do come back into Japan, we have that to share with the world. So, yep, yep. Um, we really want to come back to Japan. I want to come back to yeah. Japan. I miss Japan <laughs> so bad. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully 2022. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Edgar, how, how, how's life? Can you share with us a little bit of uh, background on what you're doing and of course, you're, you're right now is one of the well renowned uh, travel writers in in, Philippine, <laughs> in the Philippines, right? Because you have written with, uh, on um, many international magazines too, right? I mean, it's life is totally different with me. I mean, this like the world is at a standstill right now, especially in the Correct. tourism industry and the travel industry. Yeah. And you know, to be safe, I really had to stay at home. I don't know when the yeah. lockdown started in your uh, respective countries, but it's in the Philippines. It really started in March mm. of last year. Twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, in the in the beginning, in the in the first few months, I many most people thought that it would just last for a few months. So <laughs> yeah. I didn't mind just staying at home most of the time, watching Netflix, <laughs> and actually it was a great break for me because. Uh, life as a travel writer, a freelance travel writer and photographer was really, really hectic from, for me. I was, I, I was barely at home for, you know, a, I, I'm at home for a few days and then I'd hop on a plane and go somewhere else. So this was a like, pandemic life was a total change for me. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was really just about staying at home. And then I had to keep myself uh, busy like June 2020 onwards when I felt like, okay, this is going to really last much longer than what most people expect. So I got into yeah. gardening, actually. I mean, taking care of plants was some uh, 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 interest of mine, even way back. It was just because of my travels that I never got to start a collection. So, let, um, so yeah, that's one of the things that kept me busy while the pandemic is going on, collecting plants, and sometimes I'd sell them. Ooh. One of the interesting... Uh, Plants that type of plants that I um, I grow are carnivorous plants. So let me see wow. if I can. Carnivorous. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carnivorous Do plants. Do they eat human or just no? I, I, no, unfortunately not. Ed. Yeah, mostly uh, they eat insects. So I don't know if I you're. See. Let me see if I can pull up my uh, photos. Yep. We can okay. see it now. Yeah, there's my tray of uh, carnivorous plants over there. And yeah, I, there are different kinds of carnivorous is, is plants. Is that a kind of pitcher, pitcher plants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think plant, the yeah. kind, this, yeah, yeah. I think this yeah. is the type of carnivorous plant that Malaysians would be familiar yeah, with. Yeah, we, we have that. Yeah. You have pitcher plants or nepenthes that are native to Malaysia Correct. and it's native to Southeast right. Asia. So I correct, think correct. also one, another carnivorous plant that many people are familiar with would be the Venus flytrap. So that's also so the one flytraps, of the, yeah, yeah. yeah, Venus flytrap. So yeah, yeah. aside from taking care of my plants, I have, uh, we also have our family dog who just turned uh, one, one year old, I think last month. Uh, uh, Ocean is his name, and he's a rescue dog, and we've been taking care care of him over the pandemic while uh, mm. staying at home. But uh, yeah, most of the time I was staying home. But a few months ago, after I got fully vaccinated, that's when I was confident enough to start blogging again and venturing out of the house. So we'd go on hikes. So basically, it was just it was exploring all the local attractions here in Cebu. Yeah. And it was a great yeah. opportunity for me, just like what uh, Rie uh, mentioned earlier. It's a great, I mean, this was a great opportunity for me to see the, or revisit the local destinations and see places that locally that I haven't been to before. Yeah. So, yeah. but this really, all these local explorations of mine really just started um, last June or July after I got oh, very fully vaccinated. Recently. Yeah, just very recently. And that's when I revived my blog because earlier on I was I put up a different uh, blog, a different uh, Instagram page for my gardening and my plant plant collection. 
So yeah, pretty yeah. much that's it. It's a it's a it's a total it's a shift in 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 my lifestyle, and and pretty much yeah. I'm I'm spending more time at home, and it's only in the recent months that I'm able to venture out and feature. Actually, I did a few staycations already at a at a resort and also at some local hotels. So I think what's important important now is promoting domestic tourism, as what uh, yeah, Ria correct. mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Every everywhere, everywhere we have been promoting uh, domestic tourism, even Malaysia, mm -hmm. because uh, the 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 domestic market is like not booming, but uh, everybody has no the options but to stay home and try to explore their backyard, right? Yeah. So it's the same with Malaysia too, and apparently too, due to the pandemic, there are a lot of uh, Malaysian just discovered what they have in their backyard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of sad, but it's kind of, you know, uh, the silver lining of this pandemic. So, yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> we have to see it from the, from, from, from the good, perspective, uh, good perspective, right? So, yeah. um, can you, Okay, we, we, we know how, how Edgar is, is managing uh, through the new normal now. Apparently, it's been like from, from a jet setter to... to Homebody. Uh, Homebody. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, and also a plant cultivator. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and Ria, how, how, how do you manage to go through the new normal other than cooking and, and just uh, working from home? Um, how about how about when uh, the 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 Olympic came to Japan? Uh, are you affected with your works? Uh, so to be honest, um, we haven't had as strict of a lockdown. Um, of course, yeah. you know we take the precautions, like we use the hand sanitizers, all that. But um, Japan is actually a a pretty long, skinny country, and you have everything from Hokkaido to Okinawa. So of course, within reason, um, when it's okay, some we've been going to some places. So it hasn't felt mm -hmm. as like, like oh, I'm stuck at home and I can't do anything. I think um, yeah. because we're not told that, we don't feel that psychologically. So yeah. I, I really feel for, for some friends who live in certain countries where they literally, they can't go out or they have to wear masks all the time. Like we do it, we're told to, but it's not, like we're not gonna get fined for it either, so. Um, Unlike yeah. in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so in Malaysia yeah. we have we have to stay at home. We will uh, totally lock at home, and if you go out, you you um you have you will be fined. Yeah. Yeah. And you have so to go right now, Ed, it's a total. It's like the strictest level of lockdown right now in Kuala Lumpur. Um, uh, the lockdown in Malaysia has been eased uh, okay. since uh, almost a month ago, and they changed from from the the lot of alphabets, the PKP, PKP, D, PKP, B, PKP, P, you know, <laughs> same, a lot same of here, same here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they they changed to to faces. So uh, yeah, now the faces, Malaysia, the different levels of quarantine. Yeah, wow. now they change it into faces. So if you're in phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. And luckily, uh, Kuala Lumpur has been uh, into has been uh, moved into um, Kuala Lumpur and Selangor has been moved into second phase. So it's like uh, a little bit uh, the restriction has been eased a little bit. So now the economy has been uh, going on again, mm -hmm. and the traffic here is like getting crazier again. You know, sometimes I wish that the traffic is as good as during the lockdown. It was, it was, it was so nice. <laughs> yeah, Aww. yeah. But um, uh, we we keep on monitoring uh, international situations. Uh, we saw uh, Philippines happening something like Malaysia, right? So a a, a little bit um, strict lockdown. Some some kind of like Malaysia, right? Agar. Yeah, and, um, um, in the Philippines. Yeah, in the Philippines, um, only essential travel is allowed, like even around the country. Mm -hmm. um, leisure yeah. travel is allowed in certain areas. So it's really challenging right now because some places may have tighter or stricter lockdowns than other places. So it's, it's honestly, it's quite confusing. Uh, uh, the situation is quite confusing. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. The same yeah. thing with uh, going abroad. I mean, most of the people who are flying abroad would be the overseas uh, Filipino workers, like finding jobs overseas. Or... So there's yeah. really no um, leisure travel for now. I see, I see. How about uh, places? Uh, because uh, Philippines is uh, consists of thousands of islands in Vietnam. More than 7,600 islands. More than 7,600 islands. <laughs> okay, you guys have to, to know this because uh, Philippines is, is uh, you know, um, it's a country on islands. So uh, <laughs> there, there must be like some islands that is like uh, less restrictions uh, because, you know, the, 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 the pandemic has, has, hasn't come to them at all. Uh, or, or the pandemic has, has yeah yeah actually no uh, yeah yeah there there are other there are certain areas like tourism destinations that have eased their restrictions have eased their quarantines and started accepting tourists uh domestic tourists so there's um mm -hmm. boracay because these are places that are, that are highly dependent on tourism that's why they really couldn't stay shut down for uh too long so yeah, uh, yeah, some correct. of the places that are that were already open for tourism were Boracay, um, northern Palawan, like uh, El Nido and Coron, and I think Rie uh, mentioned earlier Shargao. Yes. Shargao is a uh, one of the rising destinations here in the Philippines, and it's known for its world class surfing and its rugged beaches, and it's like bohemian, low key lifestyle. A lot of um, uh, tourists uh, love going there. It's it's one of the up and coming spots here in the Philippines, and it's also one that is uh, most welcoming to uh, leisure travelers uh, right now. Which which part of Philippines is that um, the northern south? Uh, it's in the southern uh, east. It's in the uh, southeast part of the Philippines. Uh, it's in the northeastern tip of Mindanao, the large mm -hmm. island in the south. I see, I see. Okay, before we go to the next topic, uh, and um, I would like to pick uh, some questions from our audience. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. yeah, okay. Um, okay, let, let's, let's see the first question. From Muhammad Shamsuri, Muhammad Noor, traveling becomes more interesting if we travel like a local. In your opinion, what are the similarities in your country and Malaysia? Wow. Okay, we haven't come to the topic yet, but if, if you may answer on that. Similarities between Malaysia and Japan? Or similarities? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> similarities traveling like local. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I was going to talk about this a bit later, but since we're on the topic now, yeah. I think the... Yeah. I don't want to say the pros of the pandemic, but I think what we're going to start seeing after this pandemic is longer stays. Um, I'm not sure about Malaysia, but in Japan, a lot of uh, travelers, because of work schedules, everything, everyone tends to take really short vacations. Like I know yeah, yeah. I went to Paris for like three days and came back to Japan <laughs> within three days. So, <laughs> wow, that's, that's very short. It's very short. So, <laughs> Um, yeah. I think we're going to start seeing an overall shift towards longer stays, really yeah. getting to know the place rather than just going on a bus tour and trying to um, take off all these these places on yeah. the list. Um, part of that would also be a focus on adventure travel or at least, you know, it doesn't have to be extreme adventure travel, but at least out into the countryside where you can do a little bit of you know, like hiking, but also a farm stay. And then that way you get to meet locals. Um, but it's also in a safe environment because, you know, it's you're not in a crowded space. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. like to think maybe that's some of the, the similarities that Malaysian and Japanese travel, travelers might that be looking true. for. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Edgar? Because you travel to Malaysia a lot. Do you yeah, find I, any similarities? Yeah, I think what's important right now i think people will be looking for more exclusive experiences i feel like people i think that's one of the challenges right now i mean how to provide an authentic experience at the same time providing that a certain level of safety 
a lot of people right now would be looking for more private tours. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, it would be hard to be traveling with strangers because people would have that hesit certain level of hesitation. At the same time, private ac accommodations would be priority. And what also what Rhea Re uh, mentioned earlier, um, outdoor yeah. activities will be what's what's going to be top priority would be a safe way to experience a place right. um yeah, yeah 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 i think one of the, the sad things about the pandemic is that um japan we're a, a country of matsuri so matsuri means festivals um we have yeah, yeah. Yeah. festivals we have winter festivals we have like we were talking about right. cherry blossoms yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Summer festivals, and that's one of the best ways to experience the local culture, um, yeah. and, and get to meet people in the community. And I'm sure Malaysia, like when we went for the the fam trip um, in 2015, we were part of the. We went to Chinatown. There was a festival going on there. Um, I think that's either going to be done in a different way, that's smaller scale, or just totally canceled. Um, you know, I think that's going to take a few more years to to get back. Yeah, same same thing with the Philippines. We're also really big on festivals, and actually, Ed was yeah. able to experience one of the biggest festivals. It's called the yes. Simulog Festival. It's a religious it cultural crazy. festival here in Cebu fun. City, and Correct. yeah, festivals can get really big here in the Philippines. We got these street parties, this huge uh, processions, this huge uh, Mardi Gras parades. And uh, yep, yeah, that, that will be some that will be something a thing of a pa of the past. I mean, considering what's happening yeah. right now, and yeah. I wonder when that level of you know when when we'll reach that level again when we're comfortable to be hanging out in large groups in, in large crowds. Right. And I think yeah, that's one thing I, I miss about traveling, and and also yeah. interacting closely with locals is a big aspect or a big thing about what I love. Uh, uh, with with traveling, what I love about traveling, interacting with locals, and I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. one aspect that would be greatly affected uh, when it comes to how travel is going to be like in the new normal. You'll be, you know, the, the, you'll have to keep a certain distance, and you'll have to observe certain uh, health protocols uh, when interacting with the local community. Correct, correct. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you for the answer. So I'm going to pick uh, another question from Johan Kamarudin before we go into details. And uh, uh, it, we before we go into the next topic, okay? So Johan Kamarudin, uh, oh, this is our boss actually, all right? <laughs> so have the Philippines and Japan opened their borders for tourists yet? Are fully vaccinated travelers required? Uh, are fully vaccinated travelers required allowed to eat? so uh actually i think what he meant was are fully vaccinated travelers are allowed to go in uh, thailand uh, in, in your countries right now uh, oh, for the philippines i'm sorry yeah oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah for for the philippines uh the rules are constantly changing and the lists are constantly changing I just like to say right now, the Philippines isn't that open yet to international travelers, but certain destinations are already uh, opening up to domestic uh, uh, tourists. So yeah, not so unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, as of now, uh, international travel for leisure and tourism uh, isn't uh, open yet here in the Philippines, from what I know. Yeah. Yes, same in Japan, um, international how, how travel Japan? borders are still closed. Uh, obviously, with Olympics, they had media and athletes come in, but uh, for international travel travelers, it's still very much closed. They are talking about hopefully opening it up or having some sort of vaccine passport system, um, especially mm -hmm. for winter, because Japan is really famous for powder snow and snowboarding. Um, and oh, we yes. have a lot yeah, of <laughs> yeah, we have a lot yeah, of Australians yeah. um, flying in every winter and going to you know Niseko and Nagano and all these ski resorts. Uh, so they're hoping to to get international travel back in, but we'll see. Yeah, 
Yeah. Hopefully it's going to come back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to go to our second topic tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about traveling at home. So that means we're going to ask Edgar and Rie to share uh, interesting destinations at home that Malaysians should go. Uh, I know I have been to Japan like four times. I've visited uh, Osaka, Kyoto, Shoryudo. Shoryudo is not a place, right? But it's a region. Or oh, is it a yeah. region? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a region, I yeah. think. Yeah, and, and I've been to um, Nagoya. I've been to Yokohama. I've been to Tokyo, Chiba. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. I've been traveling across uh, Hokkaido Islands from all the way from uh, um, Sapporo to the end part, the, the near the Okhos. Ok yeah, Okhos. Ok Okhos <laughs> ok uh, <laughs> Sea, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. it was so hard to say that. Yeah. I, I don't remember the, the name of the place. What was the name of the place? Um, the, the name of the place, uh, Rie? Uh, yeah. Uh, where where we can we we can take this uh, ice cre ice, ice breaking ice breaking uh, ship yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 We, ice we learn about about smelt fishing there you know it was it was yeah. nice I, I love it yeah I've been traveling a lot to Japan yeah. actually <laughs> yeah and yeah, I've been to uh, and the Philippines, I've been to Manila, I've been to uh, Cebu, Bohol, and Puer Puerta Princess, Puerto Princesa. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's all. That's all. I haven't got that much opportunity to travel to Philippines. But I experienced the cinema, as Ega mentioned before. It was, it was crazy. It was gay, very, very colorful. It was. Um, amazing so i really recommend malaysian if if uh, philippine can bring back sinulog uh, when when everything is like settled down back to know, normal yeah i don't know maybe in 10 years <laughs> normal maybe in 10 years <laughs> <laughs> so malaysian must go must go to cebu must go to uh, uh cebu you, you can also see uh, this this uh, kawasan waterfall and also I don't remember the name of that place that is really, really went viral in Malaysia where they can go to the canyon. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's also in the, Kawasan. Yeah, canyon, in Badian, Kawasan. yeah, can, canyoneering. In, also in Kawasan. Yeah. Ah, canyon, canyoneering in Badian. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Everybody must go there. And you also get the opportunity to swim with the whale shark. Okay, those are the places that I know. So the challenge here for you is to share interesting destination with our audiences uh, at home that you think Malaysians should discover and should go. So we, we start with uh, Edgar. Oh, yeah, actually, Ed, you mentioned all of the places that I was going to highlight <laughs> because I'm going to recommend uh, the places that are would be, I feel that would be the first ones to open to international travelers, uh, including Malaysians. So Cebu would be yep. one of the, I think, one of the first places that will open up to tourism, international okay. tourism. It being uh, a major That's city in the Philippines and it being the second largest yeah. uh, city in the Philippines. It's definitely, be, it's, it's definitely going to be one of those destinations here locally that will uh, ease up the restrictions. And at the same time, uh, aside from Cebu, I think Bohol also I'd recommend to Malaysians. It's a, it's an yeah. it's the island province nice. east of the of Cebu, and it's a, a few hours ferry yeah. ride from here. And it yeah. I always recommend Bohol. Let me see if I can uh, show any of the pictures here that I have on my screen. Yep. One moment. So yeah, Bohol, the, the, the thing that I love about Bohol is that it has a little bit of everything that the Philippines has to offer. It has the heritage, it has landscapes, unique animals, and I think Malaysians should definitely uh, come on yeah. over and 
e- explore it. Let, let me see if I can figure out uh, how to show. Also, if my I, if I may add, uh, Bohol, they also have this Tarsia monkey. Is is it was amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah I I saw them, and so, also this uh, the Bila tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder if you can you guys see the the photo on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So. Bohol, I think, has, I was saying earlier, has a little bit of what the best things that the Philippines has to offer in one island. So it has beautiful mm-hmm. beaches. This is a beautiful uh, sunset at Alona Beach, one of the popular uh, beaches in Bohol. Um, oh, on been the there, yes. One of the, uh, a choir, if you want a quieter beach, you can go to the east coast along Anda. That's, it has beautiful uh, pristine white sand over there. I think you've been here, uh, Ed. We we did. Uh, yep, we yep. Done, we did uh, the Passport ASEAN TV series. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the most iconic uh, thing about Bohol would be the Chocolate Hills, yeah. which Chocolate is uh, Hills. a unique uh, landscape uh, of uh, limestone hills in the middle of the island, and it's very, very scenic and uh, very interesting. Interesting. It's called Chocolate Hills because these hills turn uh, chocolate brown when these uh, during summer. Of course, I mentioned earlier, Bohol is really known for its wildlife. You you mentioned the the tarsier, one of the world's smallest primates. So the Philippine tarsier can only be found. Yeah, it's only as big as a human fist, and has yep. really yep. huge Very eyes. Small. Let me see if I can pull up a, a photo here. <laughs> Oh, ah, there there, you go. Yes. that's the Philippine oh, tarsier. Yeah, isn't yes. it cute? It looks I, like heard, little... I heard that if you take a lot of photos of them, they kind of like like get stressed out and stuff. I remember you're... seeing them. They're so cute, though. Also. Yeah, you're not supposed to use flash because <laughs> yeah. these are these are yeah. nocturnal animals, yeah. and you have to. You shouldn't really bother them too much during yeah. the day. Yeah. Uh, before they, they allowed stable. tourists to yep. hold them and pet them, but now with you know with uh, people being more conscious about Right. conservation and the proper care of animals yeah, correct, and how right. to show them to people and share share the experiences uh, experiences with people uh you're not supposed to touch them touch them anymore and your flash f- photography isn't allowed either so yeah this is the philippine tarsier tarsier and it's endemic to to central and southern philippines uh the unique animals, uh, unique animal encounters aren't only found uh, inland, but also in the sea. You've got, you can go dolphin watching. And of course, yeah. you can also scuba dive uh, with sea turtles in Balikasag. Actually, this photo was taken of this uh, sea turtle was taken during our dive, Ed, in Balikasag. Yeah, yeah. yeah like way back place, in yeah. 2000. 15 or 2016 that is correct yes that's correct it was in 2015 yes so yeah these are bohol i think is is really really uh my my top recommendation uh for malaysian travelers and of course cebu cebu would be your gateway into central uh, into the philippines and exploring the central region because cebu is in we're located at the heart of the philippines in the middle so it's a great jump off point to see different points uh, uh, on the archipelago. That's the challenging thing about like, seeing the Philippines. Uh, you really, if you don't have uh, a lot of time, you really have to pick the, the right destination for you. So Correct. based on your interests yeah, yeah. and what, what, your, uh, what activities you'd like to do. Uh, yeah, Correct. aside from, from that, let me see if I can also show a few. Just a few uh, images of Cebu uh, here on my screen. Let me see. Okay, so while waiting for Edgar, so just so you guys know, those who are watching right now, traveling in the Philippines, in my own personal experience, I think Philippines offers one of the cheapest uh, traveling ever because you don't need to use a lot of money. The public transportation is like so amazingly cheap. I, I love traveling in Philippines. You know, lot with values of, uh, with your money. So yeah, hey guys, yeah. share now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned this earlier. I'll just do this quickly. Um, there's uh, Cebu. This is in Cebu where I am right now. And this one of the top things to do would be canyoneering. 
and the southern part of the island where you actually This is the jump. one that we talked just now, right? Yeah, Badian, where you jump, Canary? you jump off waterfalls, you float down a river, uh, pass through a beautiful gorge, and you emerge right. at this beautiful uh, waterfall <laughs> with this luminous blue water called Kawasan Falls. And right. yeah, that's Cebu has a lot of uh, adventure. You can do a lot of outdoor adventures here in Cebu. You can also experience a lot of the city life. And I think one of the the most exciting things in Cebu right now would be the construction of the longest and tallest bridge in the Philippines. It's eight kilometers long, and it's it's almost it's almost finished. It's called the Cebu Cordova Bridge, and it, it's the third bridge connecting Cebu to the resort island of uh, Mactan, where the airport is. So yeah, that's, this, this is, is definitely, new. yeah, this is new and it's still un, un, uh, undergoing construction. I think there's just five meters left before that bridge is going to be uh, connected. This is uh, the Just third bridge. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, do but, visit. But, but, I'm inviting everyone who's watching, please, uh, when, when, the, when the time is right, please do visit the Philippines and Correct, and, correct, correct. Yeah. Oh, it's Abashiri. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nur Aini. It was Abashiri. Oh, the, oh okay, okay. The, the ice floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Abashiri, the ice, the ice floor, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Edgar, for sharing. It, it was it was amazing. Yes, yes. You guys really have to go to Cebu and Bohol, two destinations that I have visited before, and I totally recommend it. Everything is so cheap, and I remember Bohol correctly. I had, uh, I had tried, I, I tried this uh, restaurant called Bee Farm something something. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, Bohol <laughs> the, the Bee Farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bohol Bee Farm, yeah, and the specialty was uh, with with their flower salad. It was yeah. amazing. I never, I never tried flowers sell it anywhere in the world but in bohol they have great okay, ice wait, cream there to... too yeah 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 ice cream from from uh organic ice cream right from yeah. from the material uh from from the garden, from durian right? and different like uh, unique flavors yeah. yeah correct correct so uh we go to japan now so Rie, you want to share uh interesting destination at home that malaysia yeah. should go so most travelers, when they come to Japan, you know, of course they'll go to the, the, we call it the golden route where it's Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka. And it's very easy to access those places because of the bullet train. Um, traveling within Japan is really easy because you have yeah. bullet train, you have planes, um, and you know, you can drive road trips, things like that. So, uh, and you have this whole plethora of climates from uh, snowy Hokkaido, and then you have tropical yeah. Okinawa. Uh, so it was a bit hard for me to pick where my <laughs> my favorite yeah. spots are. I'm probably, you know, Ed, you've been. It's a large country like, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I thought of a few places, and let me share. Okay. So this oh. is my favorite place in Japan. Oh. It's Nozawa Onsen. So Nozawa Onsen is a village in Nagano, which is in the mountainous central region of um, Honshu. So it's about two hours by bullet train from uh, Tokyo. So Nozawa Onsen. Two hours. Okay. Yeah, little less than two hours. You have all these old buildings in this small village. I I like it because you can walk around anywhere in this village, um, and it's famous because it has. 13 sotoyu, which are onsens. I don't know if you're comfortable with onsens or if you like onsens. I but... love onsen. Okay, good. I love onsen. <laughs> <laughs> These onsens are so hot. There's actually, there are actually signs that say, be careful, don't boil yourself, things like that. <laughs> they have little um, yeah. cold water taps that you can run uh, to make the water a little cooler. And so these onsens, they're scattered throughout the village, but the best part is they're actually all free so you know after a day of walking around or you know being in the snow you can go in you can warm yourself up there's a little donation box so you can put in money if you want to but yeah so, so this one this different. one is free because i've never been to the free ones yeah yeah, yeah. no they're all they're oh, all free. Nice. 
Yeah, next time when you nice. come, I'll show you where. All right. I, I've never been to Nagano anyway. So <laughs> yeah, so those are also yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And I like it because it's a small town. It's very traditional, but there's also a, a good community of people moving in and they're starting up cafes and, and new projects there. Um, and so actually, Elder Japan, our, our office is also based out of, one of our offices are based ah, out of. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. And then in the winter, it's this amazing place to snowboard. So this is uh, one of the, the photos of me snowboarding. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it has uh, really snow. Was that you? Yeah, that, that's that you. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. And it looks like that in winter, you can see the the animal tracks and the mountains and on a clear blue bird day, it's just really beautiful. So that's yes, one of my favorite places. And it's fun in winter and summer. Um, there's a lot to do there. Like summer, you can go cycling, you can um, go to a nearby lake and you can do stand up paddling. You can, uh, you know, uh, hike around the mountains. You can go mountain biking. There's all these different activities. So it's not just a, a ski winter destination. Uh, and then moving south to Okinawa. So just now we were saying that, you know, you're asking where would Malaysians like to travel in Japan? So I don't know. Malaysia has pretty awesome beaches. So I don't know if you want to go <laughs> to Japan to, to see another beach. But I, I need to share Ishigaki because that's one of my favorite spots. So Ishigaki... Um, it's part of Ishigaki, Iriomote Ishigaki National Park, and uh, it's a, a cluster of islands uh, just off the coast of Taiwan, actually. So it's actually closer to Taiwan than it is to... Uh, I see. Japan. So, so it's, it's on the southern, south, south, southwest south. part of Japan, right? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, very, very much south. <laughs> so it takes around... So the, the tropical part of Japan. Yeah, the tropical part. So Japan has all these different um, tropical islands around. And there's one called Ogasawara, which takes 24 hours by ferry. But uh, Ishigaki, there's a, yeah. <laughs> 24 hours? It is um, a three-hour flight from Tokyo. So I from see. Ishigaki, you can take ferries to neighboring islands. And this is to one of the neighboring islands. So Iriomote has these waterfalls. You can see we're actually here. At the top yeah yeah and you can hike it this was a, a two-hour hike to yutsun falls and uh it's just beautiful it's just um this yeah, hidden yeah, waterfall yeah. and we had it all to ourselves when we were there you have beautiful clear beaches like this one on taketomi island and uh waterfalls lots of waterfall hiking trekking but my favorite part about all this is the diving. So you can, it, oh, Ishigaki wow. is very famous for diving with mantas. Um, that's a, yeah, that's that, a big mantis. That is a big manta. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen that big. Yeah, it was very big. And we were actually really surprised. So that's why you can see my husband, he was surprised because it came from <laughs> behind. Like, ah! He was surprised. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking up at him and the manta crossing. Um, yeah, and this manta just, came up to us and circled around us for about 10 minutes uh, on our wow. last dive. And it, it was just so magical. So yep, yep, Shigaki, yep. most of the time, the best time to see the mantas um, would be, they say it's around Golden Week in May, um, April, May, June. But we went in November. We saw the mantas in November too. So they're, they're kind of there throughout the year, <laughs> uh, just as long as you don't go during the typhoon season. So that's Ishigaki. Oh. And then you can see all these uh, traditional Okinawan buildings as well. So Ishigaki, Ryomote Islands are part of, technically, they're part of Okinawa um, prefecture. Those are, are the residents' houses? Yes. So this is on Taketomi oh, Island. It looks like Malaysia. Yeah, it looks like Malaysia. And actually, <laughs> it, it's kind of interesting. Um, there are a lot of cultural similarities when I go there to Malaysia than to mainland Japan. Yeah. So I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. it was all connected before. Um, some of the food, it's very similar. So yeah, I, I kind of, when I miss Malaysia, I go to Okinawa since I can't go to Malaysia right now. <laughs> and then yeah, finally, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. going back to the mountains. So Japan is amazing hiking. This is, um, this is again Nagano, but the Kita Alps in Nagano. So a lot of times when people think hiking in Japan, everyone thinks, oh, Mount Fuji, Mount Fuji. 
and yeah. yeah it's it's nice to hike mount fuji i think everyone should do it at least once but there are also all these other amazing hikes around um the it's called the kita alps the japan alps and you can see mount fuji and other mountain ranges from there so this is ah, wow you can see mount fuji from there yeah sometimes yeah so, on a clear day so, it is, so it's uh just in tokyo uh no no this is um nagano yeah so wow, you can, that means mount fuji is very it's very, very tall yeah. that yeah you can go away. wow yeah on uh, I know we were in Chiba and we were in Chiba. There was like across the Tokyo Sea, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was it Tokyo Sea? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. So Tokyo, from yeah. Chiba across the sea, yeah. we can see the top yeah. of Fuji Mountain, but yeah. this is far, far beyond that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's so. I'm, I guess it's so flat, so you can see it. But um, yeah, this was in September, uh, during we call it Koyo. So Koyo is when the leaves change color so and Koyo. the whole mountain, it just looks like it's on fire because you have all these reds and oranges and yellows and not like actual fruit oranges, like the color orange. And so it is just beautiful during this time of the year. So actually right now, um, you have, you know, you can see all these colors right here. It's just very beautiful. Um, you can do multi-day hikes and there are all these mountain huts. They're, they're not fancy mountain huts but you can stay in them and they have food and then you can continue on your trek so you can do you know four days five days throughout the mountain range so those are my top picks for visiting in japan hopefully the next time that's I'll nice that's nice there. thank you i've never been to any of these places <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i was a challenge trying to yeah find uh, Rie. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, Rie, uh, yeah. one of our audiences, uh, one of our, our audiences says, uh, say in the comment section that yeah. every houses and buildings in Okinawa, they have a uh, lion yes. and dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why? Why is that? Uh, so th let me pull up a picture to show you. So that's called a shisa. Um, she shisa. Shisa, S H I S A. Let me. Oh wow! In Malaysia, we you we shisha is where the thing that we smoke, you know. The, the what? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, shisha. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the the the, the smoke the <laughs> yeah the, the, from 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 Arab yeah. Yeah, so this is we don't smoke the shisa, but they're um lions, little lion statues. And so one is yeah. one mouth is open, one mouth is closed. But they're said to guard the house and the like to ward off, you know, bad things from entering the house to protect and also for good luck. Um, but this culture is actually it comes from, I don't know, probably China, it's because I see it in other, mm -hmm. you know, East Asian countries as well. So mm -hmm. not maybe not exactly the same, but I have seen it elsewhere as well in uh mainland japan side we have shisa sometimes uh in different forms but a lot but okinawa it's it's kind of a um it's their their characteristic to put the shisa and then you have sometimes the cute shisa <laughs> the small uh versions of it as well so they sell those so we have two of them you know, at our um in Genkan, at our entrance okay. Yeah. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah. Actually, it's interesting, Ria, that you uh, pointed this out because we also have, interestingly, we some yeah. of the churches in the Philippines have Chinese lions guarding the entrance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah these, uh, they're called food dogs or the Chinese lions. And yeah. because me, most of the artisans, most of the, the masonry, the brickwork were done by uh, Chinese artisans uh, way back during the colonial I period. See. And many of the Interesting. of the uh, community, the people, the, the patrons of the church would be Filipino Chinese or Chinese immigrants who converted to Catholicism. So okay. you'd see some of the, the churches, including the Basilica here in Cebu, they have Chinese, similar to those that you showed us, they yeah. have Chinese dogs mm -hmm. or Chinese lions yeah. uh, guarding the entrance. Oh. So it's interesting, I all see, these I cultural see. influences that... Yeah. Are, 
similar. Yeah, yeah correct. Because yeah, yeah. 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 Okinawa, it's actually, it was part of the, the Ryukyu kingdom before mainland Japan took over. And so their mm. culture, I would say, it's a bit more similar to Southeast Asian culture and then in, very heavily influenced by Taiwan, China. Yeah, so you still see that today. All right. Yeah. Anyway, Rie, one of our Gaia Travel team member, yeah. Shaza Adela, she has, she oh. hiked Mount Kita before. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adela uh, hiked uh, Mount Kita and if I'm not mistaken, she hiked Mount Fuji too before. Oh. And I believe she hasn't hiked any mountain in, in, in the Philippines yet, I think. Uh, Edgar, Adela? You have to tell Adela? her. Adela? No, yes. no, Adela. No, we did go hike the highest mountain in the Philippines in oh, really? 2019. Yeah. Mount Apo. Oh, what was that? Near Davao oh, City. Oh, Mount Apo. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, nice. That um, Davao City is in the Mindanao, right? Yeah, yeah, southern uh, yeah. part of the Philippines. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. But I bet she didn't go to um, this. Uh, oh, I forgot the name of the the lake, the island between in the island uh, in the lake in the island in the lake. <laughs> oh, oh the, the the volcano on an in, island in a the, lake. Yeah. <laughs> That's on an our, island. That's Taal Volcano and in Taal Lake. Taal Volcano, that's, I've been that's, there. That's south of Manila. <laughs> yeah. But Aye, right now, the, yeah. Ed, the, the, the landscape yep. there is very different right now because Taal is active and it's oh, been erupting oh, wow. over the past uh, year or so. Even it, it there was a minor eruption that happened uh, la, in January uh, 2020. So even, oh, wow. even before the pandemic hit, people in that area were, were already ordering masks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because of so the how ash. About the village was, uh, yeah, yeah. Some, the... Of the, some of the towns, mm -hmm. lakeside towns near the volcano got uh, badly affected by that eruption even just a few mm -hmm. months before the pandemic started last year. Yep, but yep, yeah, it's, yep, yep. Uh, it's a very uh, scenic, place uh, a lot, there there it's are a number nice. of volcanoes here in the philippines just like in uh, indonesia yep 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 that was very beautiful i was there with um uh, kirk kirk mm, took me yeah. there yeah yeah <laughs> it was it was nice okay anyway so it was too personal so um maybe we pick another question from our audience tonight and uh, before we go to next uh topic um from Han Robson. Uh I heard that visitors have to wear huge visitor tag during their visit in the Philippines to show that they are tourists. Is this actually true? Wow, this is uh, the first I heard. Where, uh before the pan I haven't heard of anything like that, even before the pandemic, yeah, like yeah. where wear an ID saying that I was I was there, I never wear big yeah, ID. Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't seen that. Me Maybe yeah. if you're like in a in a official tour group or something, but I haven't personally seen that kind of uh, practice. Visitor tag, <laughs> if, yeah, visitor tag. <laughs> yes, so so it's it's not true. Han uh, to Han Robson, it's not true. No. <laughs> so uh, and we pick another question uh, from Zura Azu. Um, what is the dark side? Or bad memories do you ever experiences during your traveling journey? Wow, that's that's very general. So maybe you want you want to share a little bit. The dark side or bad memories do you uh, you ever experiences during your traveling? Sorry, Re could you, Rhea, you have any the dark side of what? The dark what side. What is the dark side? Okay, I think just slash the dark side. I think what she meant is like do you bad have any experience. bad memories? Oh, bad, bad experience. Bad. During your travel, yeah. Uh, so thankfully, I've never gotten anything robbed or I've you know no theft. Um, that's mainly because I'm pretty paranoid when I like travel. I'm like <laughs> putting everything around me. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I like to glare at people and stuff, so which I shouldn't. But you know, sometimes when you're traveling alone as a, a female traveler, um, you kind of have to, right? Like don't wear blank yeah. earrings or anything. So I haven't actually yeah. had anything like that happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. If anything, I've just gotten really 
um, uh, sick, like maybe food poisoning or heat stroke. I remember I was coming back from a, a media trip in Wakatobi in Indonesia once. And, you know, oh, it was wow. like okay. island hopping and we were um, just going from island to island. And then coming back to Japan, I think I took four flights out for, for some reason. And so by the end, I remember I had a fever at the, the airport. I mean, thankfully, this is back in 2015. So, you know, it, it wasn't like Corona yeah. or anything. But yeah. I had a fever. Yeah. I was lying down at the Bali airport. And I was like, oh, this is how I'm going to go. <laughs> like, <laughs> alone at Bali airport. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> so tired. And um, yeah. But other than that, uh, Thankfully, I've only had good experiences. I think the biggest thing, especially as a solo female traveler, um, yeah. just be careful of your your equipment and your bags. Don't look like you're showing off. Try to blend in. Um, you know, don't go to sketchy places. Like, like don't go to alleys and things like that. You know, common sense kind of things. Um, yep. Yep, and yep, yep. do your research ahead of time. Just I know you know people like to think oh spontaneous travel you know and and that's good too. But it's important to know basics. You know who to call in case of an emergency. Let people Correct. know where you are. Um, you know have hold accountability right. So yeah, and and bring like yeah. some of medicine and things like that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, so how about same, with, our... same with Ri. I haven't had really. Uh, awful experiences during travel i think the worst would be just having people off constantly pestering you trying to sell something trying to sell something yeah. illegal <laughs> i won't mention and <laughs> you know um yeah just that and i like re i've been yeah. pretty much uh, pretty much i've been really careful with my things and yeah and i agree with what she said and being really careful about the places that you go to and doing some initial research i'd like for personally i'd like to plan my trip but at the same time be spontaneous so a, a balance of yeah. both is, is important for me yeah 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 I, I just want everybody to know that all three of us have been traveling backpacking alone before. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> it's important because because you know traveling alone solo traveling really taught you how to manage your life mm -hmm. um you know um to 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 mitigate any problems mm -hmm. you know to handle yourself to uh, uh, when you're alone you know well okay never mind we're, we're going to the t topic of the night uh we want to talk about uh how do you see the travel and tourism industry before and after the pandemic? So, um, yeah, uh, maybe you have some general idea about uh, the tourism industry in, 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 in your home country right now, before and after, if, if you can to share with us. Uh, how about we? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, before the pandemic, I think, a lot of, if we're talking about domestic travelers, they would, or I'm sorry, not domestic travelers, Japanese people traveling, they would just yeah. take short vacations, um, try to do as many things. Obviously not, I'm generalizing, this is not everybody, but just because, you know, busy work schedules, that was kind of the trend. Um, also, because Japan's uh, tourism count was really, really increasing because of the Olympics and Rugby World Cup, so initially, they set a goal for 25, what, 25 million people, travelers. By 2018, wow. by 2018, we cap, we went over 30 million travelers. So they said, okay, so for 2020, we want 40 million travelers. But obviously, with the pandemic, that went down. Oh, but we were we were getting over 30 million travelers a year in Japan. Um, moving forward. You know, there's going to be more restriction around international travel. So I think rather than focusing on you know getting as many people as we can into the country, focusing on quality tours, packages, um, quality yeah. travel, so longer stays because people are going to be spending more to even get in the country. So once they're here, just have longer stays, um, more like a like a 
what is it like quality time with local people have um that is that is yeah. very pertinent very 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 important a part of the travel actually yeah. I, i believe especially us like like i said we we travel alone and um i think when you travel alone you you have the opportunity to to communicate with the local people and and really interact with the local right. experiences right. yeah i think i think that is the yeah. most valuable part of the traveling yeah that also, most people yeah. just ignore about it yeah yeah and also it's so important from a like the side that's organizing to make sure that the the money goes back into local communities a lot of times go back to the yeah helping the local yep, community correct, correct. The tourism um a lot of places that want tourists don't have the the capabilities to or cannot cater to english speaking tourists yet so helping those areas and regions build that that um system up and then you know maybe teaching english or helping them build these products yeah. um a, a big thing that i see working in japan is you know japanese people they're very polite they're very friendly but they're also um Go sometimes to. very a bit too humble so they're like oh you know like yeah. i don't know what our village has and it's like this amazing village and it's you know sometimes i want to tell them as a, a travel uh writer like you have all these amazing yeah. things like you can show off more you know so right, right, yeah that, i think that's part of what i do is also not just travel writing but working with local travel boards making promotional movies for them and interviewing local telling people's locals telling local stories about what makes that place interest and you know it boils yeah, down to the yeah. fact that people make places right so Yeah, yeah. Telling their stories, you know, not just oh, we have green tea and onsen, but like why, you know, maybe it's someone right. who makes yeah. green tea, maybe it's someone who built this onsen, maybe it's someone who's keeping this tradition alive, you know, things like that. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. My yeah. goal is to share those local stories. That's, yeah. And how about you, Edgar? How do you see the travel and tourism industry before and after pandemic? I think moving forward is what Ri said. You'd really have to do this in like little steps, different stages. So at this point, I think yeah. d- domestic tourism will be what people, what what governments will be focusing on, and maybe the next one or two years before international travel goes back, hopefully to to normal. In mm. I don't know, to 2023 or 2024. That's Uh, what so, some of the estimates that I read online? Uh, moving forward, I think eco tourism would be a good, would be a, a you know would be a, a trend, a big trend moving forward. Considering that people are looking uh, into experiencing the outdoors, uh, people are looking for experiences where they can feel they can still feel safe, you know, mm-hmm. and still practice the social distancing and. They will be able to manage their interactions with others. So I think ecotourism would be a big thing. Hiking, uh, one of the Correct. trends here in Cebu. I mean, it's been a trend for several years now, but there are several new glamping spots that are opening here on the island. Yep. So I, I I went to a to a really nice one called Easy Camp, where you, where guests get to book the entire camp exclusive exclusively to themselves. So I think. Exclusive experiences, private experiences, would be something that people will be looking for. I mean, go- I probably gone will be the days where would real really feel comfortable uh, staying at a shared room at a hostel. Maybe yeah, later on yeah. that's going to become we'll get used uh, that will that will return. But yeah. most most of the people now are looking for you know private villas, private experiences. Correct. And I think that's, that's the challenge in the tourism industry: how to Uh, provide authentic uh, travel experiences where people still get to experience local life, but at the same time, at a certain you know practicing a, a certain amount of safety uh, with it. So, yeah, I think outdoor activities will be the number one thing uh, moving yeah. moving forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is true. That is true. So even in Malaysia, um, I think. Um, Even uh, we have this program, um, 
apprentice program um, because uh, Malaysia has been opening Langkawi uh, two days ago, no, three days ago on 16th of September, on Malaysia Day actually, uh, they've opened Langkawi as the first uh, destination uh, in the COVID-free destination program. So Langkawi is the pioneer and kind of those who go to Langkawi right now is actually the experiment <laughs> the experiment <laughs> because they want to see how 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 the SOP how the new normal works and also it's important to identify how the people actually being responsible or not you know uh, because especially due to lockdown right so everybody has been confined at home and this is just my personal opinion. I think um, and now people really, really have to be responsible when they are yeah. doing their travel because yeah. before this, people don't really care, right? To to provide, uh, to to really plan the travel, to 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 give back to the community, you know. And um, now is the time to 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 really respond to the call by the United Nations World Tourism Organization where they, they has they outlined this uh, travel responsibility and everybody should really really be responsible because if nobody is responsible right now COVID will never be well managed you know well I, I know I, I'm kind of lecturing people now <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we go to the next topic and um, the the your experiences traveling to Malaysia. I know, like we said before, Edgar has gone to twelve states, and that includes uh, three uh, um, federal territory of Malaysia. Um, so, Edgar, so when was the last time you visited? Oh, you you said you mentioned before in two thousand nineteen, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, you went to Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, yeah. So what do you really miss the most about Malaysia? Oh, I think the number one thing I miss about Malaysia is the food. Of course, because the food, Malaysian food is very different from Filipino food. You have all these yeah. different layers, all the spices that you use in your dishes. I think right. those are the things yeah. that I miss. And, you know, I don't just miss the the proper, like the the cook dishes like rendang, but I even miss the krupuk of Terengganu, those little snacks, uh, the krupuk ikan, yep, yep. Um, the lekor. I remember loving all these krupuk snacks. Krupuk lekor, yeah. The krupuk yeah. lekor cheese is my favorite. It's it's not really traditional, but it's a modern take of the these yep. uh, like a fish. It's like fish sticks or fish, fried fish sticks, right? Ed, how, how do you describe uh, uh, lekor? Uh, it's not stick. It's um, like a. I don't know how to describe it's, it, but it's, it's not. It's not. Yeah. Really, like, it's not very crunchy, right? This lekor. Yeah, uh, it's it's a mix of uh, fishes and and flour, and they 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 mix together, and then it 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 comes in very big like this, you know, and then they fried it. And, and I mi I know, miss all the. The the breakfast food, like I know, roti, I, I roti know you chana, miss roti. Tishu. Yeah, I know you miss roti chana and tetare. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, tetare, and of yes, course, tetare. we always go to this uh, noodle place in in PJ uh, Murni. Uh, the Miraja, oh, yeah, I miss nice. I miss that noodle yeah. dish, and I miss hanging out and uh, at the durian stalls uh, eating the unlimited durian. So yeah, those yeah, are the things. I, I, the, if there's one thing I miss about Malaysia is the food because it's very, very different from what we have here in the Philippines. Yeah, 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 yeah. And out of the twelve, 12 states that you have visited before in Malaysia, which state that if you had you, you if we tell you to pick one, one your most favorite state, Agar, which one do you? Oh, have? it's so hard, but um. I guess my really memorable uh, experience in Malaysia would be one of my very first trips, which was to Sabah, which is very, very close to the Philippines because that was the yeah. time I, I climbed uh, Mount Kinabalu with a friend of mine who's a mountaineer. And 
that was the first mountain I climbed. Uh, Kinabalu. I had no training. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was crazy because my friend said, "Oh, no, you not even go... mountains in the Philippines yet before." No, no, no. Just like walks, uh, jungle hikes, but no like steep climbs before. So it's not exactly a very smart thing to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it was because my friend didn't. Uh, my friend just invited me to join him on the on the hike, and he said, "Oh, even beginners can do it, and you're pretty fit, so I think you can do it." So who but, said that? Wow. <laughs> One of my Filipino uh, mountaineer friends, but it's crazy. It, he's it a mountaineer, a, you know. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> memorable memorable trip. He's a mountaineer, but he's the one who experienced uh, altitude sickness when he reached the summit because he was hiking up very fast. I think he arrived at the Laban Rata, the jump off point, an hour earlier than Correct. I did because yeah. I was, you know, I was taking my time, taking my pay. Uh, Taking my yeah. going up at a slow pace. Yeah. Uh, the the moment That's I arrived right. at the jump off point, he was already feeling really queasy. But at the you yeah, know when we reached the when we did this the the sunrise assault to the very peak. Oh wow! It's like you're in a different planet. This rocky. I don't know Ed if you've uh, climbed uh, Mount Kinabalu before. I've it's, never been to Mount Kinabalu. It's, it's Climbing really, mountain really, is not really my. <laughs> <laughs> my kind of tea because yeah, you know yeah. I, I i i'm afraid my fitness level is not that good you know <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah that's my most memorable trip and i was actually planning for 2020 i actually had booked flights to visit sarawak because i've always wanted to visit sarawak for a long long time and i actually booked i already had tickets i was booking my my activities at gunung uh, Mulu National Park, and unfortunately, oh, wow. yeah, that uh, pandemic hit because I, 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 that my trip there was uh, booked for March of last year, and that's the same month that mm -hmm. uh, lockdown started here in the Philippines. Unfortunately, so that's correct. Yeah, yeah that's still yeah. definitely something that I want to tick off on my bucket list in the coming years. Uh, Sarawak, it's always been you know a dream of mine to visit uh, visit that place. Yep, yep, yep. How about you, Rie? So, what, when when was the last time? Okay, because your mother is from Penang, yeah. because you're half Malaysian, right? And so, when was the last time you came back to Malaysia? Ah, uh, so the last time I was there was also um July 2019. Sorry, ah, May 2019, May. And uh, yeah, I actually went to visit my grandma and she was uh, up in Penang. She passed away shortly after, unfortunately, but it was really great to oh, see yeah. her um, before that. Okay. And yeah, I grew up going to Penang, like half between Penang and half Yokohama. So yeah, it's always been like second home to me. I can't, I still can't mm -hmm. speak any Malay or Hokkien, but I, I hope so one day, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I really- Boleh, 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 senang je. Yeah, <laughs> I, my mom lives here, so she still speaks some, you know, like again sometimes to me. I'm like, huh, but I, I kind of understand. <laughs> speak it, like, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what do you miss the most about Malaysia? Penang Laksa. <laughs> ah, yeah, mine too. Uh, other places, Laksa, Penang Laksa. Penang Which, Laksa, because uh, the Asam Laksa, right? Yeah, you just can't yeah. get those ingredients yeah. in Japan. We just don't have them. So, I just found mm -hmm. one restaurant in in Malay. Uh, sorry, in Tokyo that's called oh, it's called Penang or something. <laughs> but like straight up, just yeah. So apparently they have Penang laksa there. So hopefully one of these days I'm gonna go try it out. Um, well, you have to yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, like uh, like yep. Yeah. And I heard there's a laksa festival as well, which oh, I wow. really... Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have Langkawi, Langkawi International Laksa Festival Ooh. that is going... Uh, laksa Carnival, sorry. Uh, that was going... That has been going on every year since wow. 2012, if I'm not second, or 2010. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. for the past two or three years, it was not... Um, oh. it, was, it was not uh, being on anymore so yeah no more langkawi oh. laksa festival yeah 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 but but it was amazing because 
uh, apparently not just Malaysia, uh, there are the surrounding countries, they have their own laksa actually. Oh, Even okay. there are laksa from Philippines. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? I don't remember what it's called. Oh, yep. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, doesn't look like laksa. It's probably because the noodle is like from rice, uh, yeah. rice noodle, right? And then there's from Vietnam, that's from Thailand. It was it was amazing to, yeah. to learn that there are a lot of kind of laksa in in, in the region actually. Yeah. yeah. So Rie, if yeah. you have to pick one favorite destination, favorite states in the in Malaysia, don't tell me Penang because it's gonna be biased. <laughs> 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 so where do you Think that is is your favorite? Which 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 states in Malaysia? So I feel a bit ashamed to say this, um, because I grew up going to Malaysia, just Penang a lot. I never actually really traveled outside of Penang. Like I've been to KL, I've been to um, uh, Terengganu, Terengganu, Terengganu with with you guys. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but aside from that, I haven't really visited outside of those areas. So I like the Redang, but um. Yeah, I would love to go to Borneo, that side. I would love to climb Mount Kinabalu. And actually, that's what I was hoping um, that we could do once, you know, the pandemic is done. And my husband, Casey, he, he's never been to Malaysia, so I wanted to introduce him to um, Malaysia, Malaysian food. and um, Your Malaysian, your Malaysian food. route. Yes, he, he <laughs> likes to Roger, so he was like, oh, Malaysia. <laughs> But you have to tell him that Malaysia is is really humid and 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 yeah and hot, you know. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I yeah. thought I thought the Philippines is very hot and humid, but Singapore oh. and Malaysia has a different level of yeah. humidity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so different. It's there's no point in you know you just constantly sweating. <laughs> because so you got you guys are much closer to the equator. Yeah, yeah, Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Malaysia is, is right on equatorial line, equatorial line, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Rie, you have to come back to Malaysia very, yeah. very soon when yeah. they open. <laughs> okay, uh, Edgar Lily said you have been planning to come to Sarawak many times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I was really excited for last year. I had everything planned out. I was going yeah. to Miri and Gunung Mulu and maybe end up my trip at, in Kuching. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but didn't push through. Maybe hopefully in the coming years, I'd get to finally visit Sarawak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Nuru Aini, uh, Singapore laksa in Harajuku. Oh, yeah. Oh. We actually have a lot of Singapore laksa here. Yeah, but, but it's different, uh, right? Laksa. <laughs> I actually, I actually like the, the, the laksa, the curry laksa the, in Johor. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Johor curry laksa is totally, totally different than other laksa in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. not, not, not even in Singapore. They, Singapore, yeah. they have something like uh, Penang laksa, but with totally different. But in Johor, they use spaghetti. It's totally <laughs> westernized laksa. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have completed our night today. So now it's oh. time for me to pick three best questions uh, this week. Okay, <laughs> so who are the winners? Okay, all right, uh, we have, okay, uh, thank you, Shahida, for uh, helping, uh, giving me the top three questions. Okay, the number one question for tonight that we're gonna receive. Um, okay, let me see again the, the prizes. It's like, there's a lot of prizes here. Best question. Okay, the top three uh, winners tonight is gonna bring, it's gonna receive one voucher, entrance voucher to Skytrax Langkawi and one packet of Mas Daiba Baso Oden Viral. I thought Oden Ooh. is from Japan, but it says yeah. from Korea. I don't know. Right, it's from Japan, supposedly. Right? So this is like the mix of uh, Oden and, and also Indonesian bakso. Ooh. Uh, so it's like a and, fusion, and, and, a fusion yeah. uh, noodle dish. 
Yeah, oh. yeah, it's yeah. efficient enough. Yeah, but but Deba is from Korea. Oden is from Japan. <laughs> yeah. Bakso is from Indonesia. <laughs> so, I know. Super efficient. So thank you very much, uh, Mas Deba, for sponsoring our night tonight. So and also. Um, four vouchers, uh, buy one free one from Starbucks Malaysia and also one Gaya Travel Magazine. Okay, the first question is from Zura Azu. How do you plan your itinerary when traveling and what is your main source for reference and guide? What is, oh wow, that's a lot of question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do you plan your itinerary when traveling? What is your main, main source of for reference and guide? And what is the top three do and don'ts that we need to be aware of when in Japan and Philippines. So we go to Edgar first. Ah, my main source, I, I source a lot from different places. I, I do a lot of readings online. Uh, initially, I like reading, you know, I like something tactile. So I like, before I used to read a lot of these uh, guidebooks, these Lonely Planet guidebooks, which I still yeah, yeah. have. They make great uh, bathroom reading for me sometimes. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I get inspiration from there. I ask uh, my friends. Sometimes when you're also browsing through social media, you get to uh, yeah. uh, you get your uh, familiarize yourselves with new spots or trending areas in a certain destination. So I, I tap from different uh, sources. And what was the second question again? The and second question: was, What is the three do and don'ts that we need to be aware of when in Japan and Philippines. So do and don'ts in Philippines for you. Okay, I think uh, number one, uh, one of the first experiences when you arrive in the Philippines, especially when you arrive in Manila, is the taxis. You have to make sure oh. your the taxis are on, on, on meter. So <laughs> I see. Yeah, that's oh, definitely... Oh, just like the jeepneys. Yeah, yeah, or take no, but if you're if you're just arriving and you have luggage with you and you're going to the airport, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you can either I think it's better it's better for you to take a grab instead of the yeah, airport. Yeah. Oh, they have just, grab now yeah. in flipping. Yep, we used to have oh, Uber as well, nice. but I think yeah, mm -hmm. just just grab for now. Uh, yeah, what else? Yeah. Um, when you're pla traveling in the Philippines, uh, make sure you have a lot of. Uh, especially when you're traveling in the more remote areas you you have to break down your money because you'll be spending in cash especially in the more remote areas in the philippines oh, so okay you have to break it down to smaller change because that's usually a problem with uh, some of the travelers. What, what do you mean withdraw their money and they're in larger bills like larger denominations uh -huh. make sure that you have uh, smaller de denominations with you when you're traveling and because like they more, they don't accept yeah bigger... yeah like yeah bigger amounts and stuff like that the, the, some of the problem okay. so yeah what, what else okay. um yeah um when traveling in the philippines don't um cram your uh your itinerary so much i know there's so much things to do in the philippines there's so many islands to see yeah. um but you know folk um make sure you have enough time to maybe i, I think even for a first timer, a week at least, seven to ten days in the Philippines. I think three days is just too short. Um, Very and, short. And read about the Philippines, the entire Philippines, and just focus on certain regions and come back. You know, you can you can do the Philippines in, in, in several trips. On your first trip, maybe you'd focus on the beaches and the central part of the yeah. of, of the Philippines. And then on your next trip, you can go further north. To vegan, where you can uh, visit the UNESCO World Heritage town, uh, Spanish town. Uh, yeah, what what I'm just trying to say is, you know, pick your pick your destinations wisely based on your interests. Yeah, and, uh, don't, don't don't pick like uh like three destination. Like don't combine Manila, Bohol, and Cebu in one trip. It's it's crazy, right? I mean, it's doable, but everything will just end up to be a no. blur, especially if you don't spend em yeah. uh, enough time in each area. I mean, Correct. you experience it yourself, right, Ed, when you were here? I mean, you were it was yeah, just a yeah. few days and you were just focused on Cebu. But, you know, traveling yeah. traveling here, I mean, our public transportation isn't as uh, as efficient as Japan's, where a bullet train 
can take you several Correct. hundred kilometers to another city in a yeah. in a few hours. Here, sometimes traveling yeah. to a remote yeah. village or, a, or 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 destination would take an entire day. You know, taking a combination of ferries, yeah. Yeah. bus rides. So please take into consideration the travel times in in planning your trip here in the Philippines. Yeah. So Lily Riani said you guys must go to Lo Locos Norte in Luzon, Philippines. Yeah, I think that's where I that's where I toured Lily. It's interesting because all of mm. my Malaysian uh, friends who visited here in the Philippines visited different areas, regions in the Philippines. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Lily was I I think we 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 visit we toured mostly the northernmost island of uh, yeah. Luzon further up north mm -hmm. and then you shams and the passport asian crew we explored bohol and then adela bohol uh, we, and, we yeah. did uh southern mindanao last 2019 yeah. so yeah there's a lot yeah. of things to do so choose your destinations here wisely and plan your trip yep. accordingly yep how about rie you you write for for uh, uh outdoor japan and of course, you can share with us your main source for reference and mm -hmm. what is the top three do and don'ts that Malaysian need to be aware of when coming to Japan? Yeah, so uh, for me, when I travel, uh, I look at magazines, of course. So this is the, yeah. you can't see it. <laughs> so, oh, <yeah>. Disappearing magazine. <laughs> okay. Well, like, magazine that I'm, or traveler magazine, but of course I look at magazines, but uh, recently it's more yeah. been um, you know, I would think of a destination that I want to go to, but I would look on YouTube, watch videos about the place. A lot of times you can kind of get a real feeling yeah. of how that place actually looks. You know, sometimes when you see on Instagram, you know, people put filters, all that kind of stuff. So you kind of want to know people's actual reaction, yeah. and how the place might actually look. Um, and then before I go to any destination, I always like to read books about the place, not necessarily guidebooks, but um, like fiction novels that are set in that area or historical novels. I love doing that before going to a, um, my destination. Uh, so top three do's and don'ts in yeah. while traveling to Japan. So Japan is very safe. Um, you know, it, it's very rare that you're going to get mugged or, or, you know, things stolen. If you drop something, usually truly. people put it there. Yep, truly. Uh, yeah, very safe. So the top three things I would recommend you do when you come to Japan, one is uh, take advantage of the JR Tourist Pass. So to get around Japan, you have you can take the Shinkansen, but there's um, you can also take, it's this company, Japan Railway, but Japan Rail um, Train Pass. Yeah. So from that, you can you know go on the bullet train, you can go on local trains, and you can use, uh, it's a pass and it's... Um, discounted for foreigners coming to Japan. So take advantage yeah, yeah. of that. Yeah. Second is carry cash. Um, a lot of places, it's slowly changing, but a lot of places only accept cash, especially out in the countryside. I see. And three, third one is, you know, when you're here, try to do a workshop, whether it's crafts or a cooking lesson. Um, there's so many different types of traditional crafts here and uh, definitely, you know, it, it's something nice that you can bring home. For example, like a chopsticks workshop, that's fun. You know, you can bring that back, but you also learn about the local culture. Japan right, puts, right. Um, has a lot of pride in craftsmanship. It's very, you know, they, they're very like, detailed and everything. So, yeah, definitely take part in a, a workshop. Uh, three yeah. things to be aware of when you come to Japan. Uh, so generally, it's very safe. Um, people are very, very friendly and polite. But yeah. the reason yeah. why it's so polite is you have to know that there's um, certain etiquette rules that you would have to follow. For example, when you ride the train, don't talk loudly on the phone. Don't talk loudly with your no. friends. Yeah, correct. Especially now with the pandemic, so everyone's very quiet. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so be aware of that. Uh, when you're going into a hot spring, know the etiquette behind that too. You know, like you have to wash yourself first and then make sure if you have long hair, put it in a bun and then go inside the onsen, the hot spring. Uh, just be aware of that. Um, yeah. What else? The third thing. 
Hmm. I think those are basically the, the two things that I can think of. Yeah, just know the etiquette. Um, and, you know, if you don't know, you know, what you're supposed to do, you, you know, you can ask somebody. Usually, even if they can't speak English, most of the time they can kind of show you and then they'll know, oh, okay, like you didn't know. They'd be able to, to be more understanding of that. So, yeah. Those yeah, are yeah. All right. Thank you, Rie. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, Rie mentioned about JR Pass just now, and um, I'm not sure now about now. But uh, if you, if Malaysians uh, wants to go to Japan and you want to acquire the the pass, the JR Pass, um, it's almost not possible for you uh, to to get this uh, travel um, pass in Japan. Uh, but you have to purchase it earlier in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So you get the discounted pass. Not in Japan, but you have to buy it from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, we have Hasif already tell me to tell the guest to fasten the answer. Okay. Okay, Hasif. <laughs> All right. We have the second question uh, from Oni Yi. Congratulations, Oni Yi. And uh, two separate questions. One for Miss Ryoshi. Hi, Miss Ryoshi. May I know if there is any difference on the food in different prefectures in Japan? Because I generally generally know that Japanese is sushi, ramen, tempura, and etc. Yeah. So there so how, are how the food are different. Yeah, there are different um, regional foods. Uh, for example, Okinawan food. You know, it's they use like um, yeah. special kind of meat, like pork belly or. Um, uh, spicy food, um, depending like Kyushu, the southern part, they would have a bit more spicy food as well. Um, if you go further north, they have certain um, like hot pot stews. Uh, depending on the region, the type of mochi, the rice cakes are different. And I remembered my third tip for just now too is that um, there are halal options coming up, uh, especially in major um, oh, yeah, tourist yeah. destinations. So. Uh, they do have halal guides um, that if you search up like Japan halal guide or something like that, then they have those options as well. But um, yeah, there definitely are different yeah. regional foods. You know, ramen is a bit different depending on where you go. Like the Hokkaido one is kind of like a thick broth and a thicker noodle and the one in uh, further south might be thinner. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ri. Thank you, Rie. Okay, uh, for Mr. Edgar Allen Yap. Hello, Mr. Edgar Allen Yap. How Hello. do you adjust your living during pandemic? And okay, he answered that question already. Because an outgoing person always feels stressful being stranded at home, especially for such a long period of this pandemic. Okay, maybe you can just re recap what you shared before. Uh, yeah, a lot of people ask me when the pandemic was ongoing, like, how are you managing? Or you must be getting crazy, like just staying at home most of the time. But yeah. I'm pretty much an adaptable kind of person where when you even with staying at home, I'm fine. And I actually welcome the idea of staying put at one in one place and spending more time with my family. Uh, which I didn't really get to do yeah. while I was travel traveling a lot as a freelance travel writer and photographer. Yeah. And yeah. I guess uh, gardening and taking care of plants and collecting these things kept my mind busy uh, during the pandemic. I mean, I've always been into plants. Even when I go hiking, I like taking photographs of all these weird plants that we find in the jungle, like the Nepenthes the pitcher plants. And, you know, I figured out since during the yeah. earlier part of the lockdowns, you know, I couldn't go hiking. Why not bring the jungle to my home instead? So I have all these weird pitcher plants at home in my garden. Yeah. So th that's definitely one thing that's kept me sane uh, during these uh, difficult times. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ega, for the answer. Okay. Thank you, Oni, for the question and congratulations. And also our third question for the night from Rafzan Tomomi. Congratulations. And okay, the question would be, uh, goes like this. Hi, Agar and Rie. What is the biggest pet peeve that you experience when traveling? And since both of you are seasoned travelers and can be considered as travel advocates, have you ever felt 
travel burnout and how do you inspire others to travel responsibly wow that's such a long question oh wow a lot so, yeah that's <laughs> uh okay we begin uh, who, yeah yeah but we have very short time maybe uh just short answer to that uh Edgar and Rie uh how to travel i guess i'd like to answer the last question how to travel responsibly i think you've got when you travel how, how do you inspire how do you inspire others to travel responsibly how do i inspire others i think through my platforms like yes. my social media platforms featuring the featuring the prop the kinds of uh, experiences that are yeah. that protect you know that that are um environmentally friendly and also encourage uh, environmentally sound uh, practices and when you, when you travel such as you know i'd like to bring always my own water bottle i think it's also something that people would be more keen on doing uh, mm -hmm. during the new yeah. normal kind of traveling because uh, yeah. we'd like you know in terms of hygiene and safety we we'd be uh, yeah be more comfortable about bringing our own water bottles and supporting community-based tourism and supporting, uh, you know, um, all these um, outdoor activities that are, that protect the environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. How about you, Rie? So yeah. uh, what, 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 why not you, maybe because, because you write for Outdoor Japan, right? Maybe yeah. you can answer um, this since both of you are seasoned travelers and can be a, considered as travel advocates, have you ever felt travel burn out? Yeah, uh, a few years ago, I noticed I was starting to get sick easily. Um, you know, like I would catch colds, I would get back pains, things like that. So I realized, you know, I need to make sure I put breaks between travel, um, you know, try not to squeeze a lot of different things in one trip, like focus on, you know, one story, get the story and focus on that. And I also, you know, make sure my, because I do videography as well. So make sure the shoots, yeah. you know, there's rest in between, sleep well, take vitamins, you know, drink tea when you're on the shoot. So things like that. Um, yeah. it's taking care of your body, exercising when you can while you're on the go which is really hard, but just even a little bit, 10 to 15 minutes a day, being careful, you know, like don't just try to get convenience store sandwiches all the time, but try to get, you know, right, right. vegetables as much as you can while on the go. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I have experienced a bit of that, but, um, you know, it just made me reevaluate my health and how to, to travel safely, you know, and take care of my body while I'm And traveling. healthily, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right, thank you very much, Edgar and Rie, for being our guests for the night. And thank you for taking your time. And especially, we know that Japan is very late right now. I think it's <laughs> almost 12, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, do you guys have any your last words that you want to share, especially may maybe advocate others to travel responsibly? Uh, yes, I, maybe I'd like to go first. Uh, first and foremost, thank you, Ed, for uh, yeah. having us uh, on the show. To you, to Hasi, Hasif, and the rest of the Gaia Travel team. And also thank you to everyone who tuned in to our show tonight. And yeah, I hope everyone stays safe and travels uh, responsibly uh, moving forward. I, I guess the first steps would be to get to know your own uh, local yeah. destinations first, get to explore your yeah. own yeah. Uh, attractions, yeah. and then finally moving forward, get to continue checking off our bucket lists, you know, that were put yeah. on hold, that were put on pause because of the pandemic. So I hope everybody stays yeah. safe. I know everybody is so excited to go out and, you know, just go, just, just you know, be, uh, set themselves free because of all the lockdowns. But I hope we don't forget to practice lockdowns. all yeah yeah, yeah. I have to uh, have to uh, maintain all the health protocols uh, stay safe and be masked yeah. even when we're traveling uh maybe in the next few yeah. years moving on moving forward so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. Rie, your last word <laughs> yeah so 
Seperti Ed and Pasif and Gaya team. Thank you everyone for listening and it was really fun to um, connect uh, tonight. Uh, I guess what I want to say is that you know right now with everything going on it's so easy to to get caught up in the, the fear and like you know that uncertainty of when are we going to travel and all that again but yeah it's a good way to it's a good time to reflect to be you know thankful for the memories we've had of travel and you know hopefully in the future we can travel again but at the same time also you know connecting with people close to you uh figuring out you know what kind of travel you're interested in how to support local starting with you know the, your community yeah. and go from there yeah. everyone i hope everyone stays safe out there all right thank you Rie. thank you agar and mm -hmm. also i would like on behalf of guy travel magazine i would like to extend our gratitude uh to our sponsors skytrax langkawi starbucks Swada Cosmetic and Mas Debak or then Viral. Ah, Viral. So <laughs> don't forget that we still have the Be Gaya Ambassador contest going on until 30th of September 2021. And please, please, please participate in this contest because you may stand a chance to win up to around 10,000 worth of prizes. So we're going to be back again next week uh, with another guest um i haven't checked just now but uh, if i'm not mistaken we're gonna go back to selangor or we're gonna have another guest and um but we'll be we will be coming back the same time the same day next week and see you guys and have a good night stay safe everyone bye 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 terima kasih terima kasih <laughs> Terima kasih kerana bersama kami. Semoga anda peroleh manfaat. Melalui mahu dapatkan majalah dan baju eksklusif Gaya Travel Magazine, tak perlu keluar rumah sebab kami kini di Shopee. Ikuti juga kami di Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok dan YouTube untuk lebih banyak kandungan kembara. Jumpa lagi!